Windows Dev Kit 2023. They shortened the word developer to dev. That's catchy, Microsoft. I myself prefer the cooler name Volterra. So I've been playing around with this for about a week now, and this video is kind of a summary of my initial impressions with this system. I'll skip all the grass growing installation bits here and cut right to the chase. But if you did want to see the whole unboxing and setup in real time, I'll link to the live stream we did the other day in the description. So many of you will be interested in how this machine will handle developer oriented tasks compared to the M1 Mac Mini, since both of these machines are based around an ARM SOC or system on chip architecture. And while silver beats black in the synthetic benchmark scores, in my series on Volterra, I'll be testing individual developer workflows and doing compilation tests. And we'll go head to head against the Mini as well as some other machines. And I'm especially curious to see if running Windows on ARM in parallels on a Mac can compete with a dedicated ARM Windows box like Volterra. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those videos coming up. So about the box itself, you have to charge it using the AC to DC adapter that comes with it. It's a 90 watt brick. There is no power delivery option available for charging via USB-C, unfortunately. But using those two USB-C ports, you can run up to three monitors simultaneously. That includes that mini display port, which is the primary monitor output. If you choose not to use the display port and only use USB-C for your monitor outputs, there is a really long delay. And I found this in the documentation. There's up to 25 seconds that you have to wait before any image is shown on the monitor. This delay doesn't happen when you're using DisplayPort, but still compared to the Mac Mini, the startup time is a little bit slower, although not by a lot. Once the machine is going and it's idling with nothing running, it's using about five to six watts of power. This is compared to Mac Mini's three to four watts of power while just sitting there. Power usage does go up considerably if you start running any software. For example, if you start up WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, pretty common thing you'll be doing with this box, as I'll get into in a moment, power usage jumps up to about 30 watts. Now, just after setup, if you take a look at what's running on the machine, the services that are running, you'll notice that actually Microsoft did a pretty good job translating or porting over most of the services to ARM with just a couple still not ported over that run via Microsoft's own ARM translation layer. These are not mission critical services, so it's okay because if they were mission critical, I'd be a little worried as a Microsoft's translation layer is not the fastest thing around. When the CPUs do run full blast on a multi-core Python algorithm, that made the power usage jump up to 30 watts and the body temperature rose up to 46 degrees from a nice cool 31 degrees while standing still and idling. There's also a fan in this box. It's pretty silent. I could not hear it at all. And when I did run the CPUs at full blast, it was just a gentle breeze. Very tolerable noise floor on that. Now, speaking of hardware, I did run Winsat disk on this to get the speed of the hard drive that's installed. 2700 megabytes per second read speed with about 1691 write speed. So about a middle of the line SSD in there. None of the ports on the machine are labeled, by the way. So if you wanted to check what uh, network speed is on that Ethernet port, you really have to dig through the documentation. But Jeff Gearling ran some network tests using iPerf and he got one gigabit speeds on that port. You do get Windows 11 Pro with a box. There's no special developer features that are enabled and it's pretty much a consumer experience right out of the box. You have to install and turn on any features that are developer related like WSL, for example. And I'm glad they included Windows 11 Pro here because then I can just enable remote desktop and use this box as a headless server somewhere in the closet. In which case, any noise that you might've heard or coil whine that Jeff reported on, which I could not reproduce by the way, you won't even hear that. Now let's talk about what's really good about this box from a developer standpoint. First of all, if you're a .NET developer, this box is really good. It's you're going to be in heaven. Visual Studio runs perfectly. It's just mm, chef's kiss. Of course, not all workflows are yet supported on this and Visual Studio 2022 17.4 Preview 6 is still in preview, it's not yet fully out, but it will be very soon. And if you're doing Node via Visual Studio, I'm sorry. But if you're doing ASP.NET and those workflows, .NET Core, things like that, then you're golden. I did test the ARM version of Visual Studio on an Apple Silicon Mac through Parallels on Windows ARM, and that was already impressive enough. Now this being ARM hardware, 
you can imagine it does a good job. If you're not in the Visual Studio ecosystem, you're probably using Visual Studio Code. And installing Visual Studio Code is super easy when you're on the installation website. There's a nice matrix displaying what type of installer you want and for what architecture, really easy. But with Windows 11, you get WinGet, which is a really simple way to install tools like Visual Studio Code. You just pop open terminal, run WinGet install code, and it automatically figures out that you need the ARM version of Visual Studio Code, installs it, and boom, you're ready to go without needing to visit any websites or anything like that. I've also installed Git this way, and Power Toys is fully ARM compatible as well. For those of you that use that, really nice set of tools for Windows. And finally, WSL. I told you I'll get back to that. WSL, or Windows Subsystem for Linux, if you don't use it much, Yet, with this box, you will, since there's a lot of software that is available for x64 Windows and ARM Linux and even Apple Silicon Macs, but there is a glaring gap of missing software for ARM Windows. Some of the most prominent things that I use that are missing are like Docker, Chrome, Miniconda for Python development. Installing these might even work fine, but running them will be a mixed bag of either molasses, slow as molasses, or you're gonna get errors. I kinda had a feeling this wouldn't work, but I did try installing Docker Desktop on Windows. This is probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. Don't do it, man. Docker Desktop is not gonna work on there. I'm gonna do it. You gotta try. Told ya. <laughs> so some of the software you won't be able to use on Windows for ARM, at least not effectively, but they will work beautifully in Linux for ARM that runs inside of Windows for ARM. They just need to be the Linux versions of the software. Docker is a good example of that. Docker works perfectly fine inside of WSL. And luckily the performance inside of WSL is pretty close to native Windows. I did run Geekbench on both WSL and on Windows and WSL single core performance in Geekbench is actually better than on native Windows. Multi-core performance on Windows beats that of WSL, but not by much. BendyCat on Twitter reported that Linux running in a VM got higher Geekbench scores than Geekbench on Windows natively, which really shows what an incredible job the virtualization team at Microsoft has done. And I'm gonna venture a guess that WSL benefits tremendously from that. All right, mobile dev. Um, let's talk about that for a second. And I know I won't cover all the development topics right now, but I'll, I'll get to them. Maybe not all of them, but I'll get to some of them. Mobile dev is something I do, so I was interested in seeing how this will work. And unfortunately, mobile dev doesn't get enough love yet on this machine. While you're able to run Windows subsystem for Android, since it supports ARM, this will allow you to load and run Android apps from the Amazon store on Windows to test your apps. The typical developer toolchain for Android development won't work as Android Studio doesn't really come in a Windows for ARM version. However, JetBrains has just, on October 28th, they push the Windows for ARM64 build, you can try that out. Now for iOS development, I'm gonna use my Mac mini for that. Yeah. Just because some software doesn't natively support Windows for ARM, it doesn't mean you can't run it at all. Windows for ARM has that translation layer built in that I was talking about earlier. It translates your x86 and x64 software to run on ARM in real time. This is similar to how Rosetta 2 translates x64 software on a Mac, but just uh, much, much slower. Even running an x64 version of Chrome, Chrome is not available uh, in Windows for ARM, by the way, at all. Yeah, I know there's Chromium that you could use and actually Edge is based on Chromium and Edge works pretty nicely. But anyway, getting back to the topic here, the X64 version of Chrome is extremely slow. It's visibly slow compared to the native Edge browser and speedometer tests confirm this. Even if you were able to install Android Studio, the full IDE, or really any tool or any developer IDE that's going to be x64 only, it's possible, but in reality, it's out of the question. 
you might be into machine learning and machine learning workflows are supported by the onboard NPU or the neural processing unit, but you might need to tweak your pipelines to use the Qualcomm neural processing SDK or the Onyx runtime. So Volterra is a great machine for those developers that use the Microsoft stack and are also comfortable with Linux. You're going to be using Linux or WSL more precisely for a lot of your tasks on this box. So get used to it. I have to disappoint some people. These are the diehard Linux fans that thought, oh, we're just going to install Linux on bare metal here. Running Linux directly on metal on this machine without special modifications and new drivers to allow it to run on this Qualcomm 8 processor is currently not doable. There's no support for it right now. So you're going to be forced to use WSL for a lot of your tasks. Another Alex, Alex Ellis, published his attempts at installing Linux on this box. I'll link to his post down below. It's pretty interesting. But at the same time, it's also disappointing. He goes through all the different things he's tried to get Linux working on the on bare metal on this box. He even tried to use a custom build Linux kernel via WSL and that did not work. At least not yet. So who is this box for? Well, it's for a subset of developers who are trying to port their applications, their existing applications over to Windows for ARM. It's for people that are going to get a really nice machine with 32 gigs of RAM. If you want to do ASP.NET development, you can do uh, Python development on it. You can do JavaScript development on it, front end, back end, but it's going to be a strictly development machine. I don't think this machine is for consumers. There's just simply not enough software available for you to easily run on this machine through Windows. It's a good development machine, but my initial impressions are that those that have a limited budget and can spend maybe $100 more for a Mac Mini and get parallels with the Windows for ARM environment with Visual Studio and get all the apps that the Mac ecosystem has to offer, then that's a better deal right now. For consumers, and those developers where you don't have mission critical testing that you need to do for your Windows for ARM apps. But I also think that Microsoft is not really targeting consumers here. They called it the Windows Dev Kit 2023. It's very specific. It's not a Surface Mini or a Surface Desktop for a reason. I'm really glad that they're moving into this direction and I hope that they keep offering more and more hardware to support developers and consumers with Windows for ARM. It's going to be great. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So thanks for watching. That's it for me today. I'll be back.